Yeah, my girlfriend sent a picture of a girlfriend sent a picture of a niece in the bath. It wasn't a good idea. Okay, you started recording. You shouldn't have started already. Okay. So I, I, I'm going to tie. Well, it, it's kind of a variation on a rab. In fact, it's pretty much just a rab with different legs, and we'll get to the legs in a while. Um, and it's going to be black or dark one, because I know the standard rab is quite red and a lot lighter. Um, you know, there's some grizzly hackle here, but I'm quite partial to tying black rabs. I found them to be quite uh, productive when it comes to um, brown trout. Brown trout seem to be a little more inclined to to eat a black rab than, than other stuff. Um, what would you use for normal rainbow? Okay. Hmm? No, I can, I can, a brighter version of potentially the same fly, but the darker one is, is kind of nice. So... Um, this is a S10 2S size 10. It's probably a little big, but it's a short shank hook. Herman couldn't find a 12. Yeah. It's, about it's about a 12, you know. Yeah, 12 is kind of the top end, the, the, the top end size that you'd like. Um, tailings, normal, mix in feather fibers, Cock de Leon, or whatever you'd like to use. Mm. I'm going to try use this, whatever feather I'm going to use for tying the fly. I'm going to try use the similar, similar material for the tail. Rabs pretty much have oversized hackle. And the critical thing about a rab is to make sure that the tail is not too short. If your tail and your rab is too short, then you're going to have problems. Um, purely because the hackle tends to be oversized. So an oversized hackle with too short a tail means it always ends up landing hackle down, tail up. And that's one of the big problems if you're fishing a rab, if, if the tail is too short. So you don't want a tail that's too short on your rab. Um, I'm just trying to find an appropriate length feather. Let's see what we got here. Damn. Okay. Do, 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 do. Okay. Now it looks okay. It looks okay. Right. Okay, so you're gonna I'm gonna mix whatever in for the tail. I'm just gonna find some appropriate fiber that's long. Normally the side hackles on a on a cape. Cape. Or, or your spade hackles are not wider. Unfortunately, on a saddle, your side hackles aren't any different from the rest. So I'm just going to try to dig up one that's not too bad out the, the back end here, where the fibers are a little longer. And we'll use that for ta some tail. And more of the same here, I think. Not too short. Too short. Unusual, hey Herman? Yeah, normally you find yeah it's like, I, this is all too long normally, but in this case I'm finding fibers that are too short for the tail. What's that? Mm, I'll have to make a plan, I think. Okay, let's... So I'm going to mix... No, it's too short. I'm going to mix brown and... Well, this is furnace and grizzly for in, in the hackle for this pattern. Um, purely just because I like... I've always liked mixing colors. I think it looks a lot better than, than, than monochrome. Grizzlies, are, grizzlies are always a good choice, and a lot of my capes are grizzly dyed some color. So my blacks even grizzly dyed black, just because it gives you some barring. Um, you'd be quite surprised how much barring it gives you that you don't normally see on the. Damn it! Normal pattern. Okay. It's. This is sort of a this is sort of a Cree variant cape that Herman's got here with this grizzly one. It was a Cree, but they got picked out of it. Oh, it's yeah. So. Hopefully I can find some brownish hackle fibers. I don't know if you can see that. That feather's that feather's kind of got it all in one. Mm. Oh, sorry, there we go. You see that feather's kind of got it all in one. It's brown and okay. So strip off. That will have to do. Okay. Thread. I'm not too particular. Where you're going to start your thread? Um, I'm tying with nano silk. Anyone use nano silk? Herman, you have. But who else has used nano silk? And if you haven't started, I know and that, that I'm actually going to get. If you haven't tied with nano silk, okay, this is a size 12 hook. I'm just going to put it towards the eye, and I just want to show you what nano silk does. Um, after playing with nano silk, you pretty much realise that you can't. It's just, you can't break your thread. 
which is not necessarily a bad thing, by the way, except when you start tying with something else that you can break, whereupon you realize you've got a problem. Okay, I'm just going to do a little thread bump on the, on the butt here. Uh, worry about these tails. What sort of thickness is that? This, this is about 70 denier or so, or so, I'm not too sure. Um, they're releasing one that's 30 denier, which is like about 16, I think. Um, yes? Go back a step. No, no, it's fine. You want to do the thread bump? No, no. Oh, the thread bump. Yeah, okay, let's just... Explain? I'll explain the thread bump. Oh, no, I've got it hooked it around the eye. Um, when you want to splay a tail on, on, a, on, on a fly, yeah, point. when you want to splay a tail on a fly, it's often best to make a little thread bump at the bend. Now, I'm going to have to try to find some longer fibers because that's too short for the tail on this fly. So the idea is I'm just putting on, and this, this thread lies very flat. Okay, so I get it back to the, to the bend roughly where I'm going to start. And then you spin it clockwise. So that now tightens the thread. The thread by its nature flattens and now you tighten and now what you do is you actually wrap a couple of turns of thread on top of each other and I'll spin it again and what you do is you actually create a little bump it's kind of hard to see but I, I can actually see it there that there's a little bump on the bend and that thread bump you actually when you tie your tail down you tie it down tight up against that bump which actually splays it out um, and that's how you get your damn Herman just use softer, softer, um, yeah. Can you get the length? Yeah, okay. Get the length at least. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Yeah, okay. Does it splay it out as well as lift it up? Yeah, well, the, the lifting up part, it comes either, it, it, to some degree lifts it up, but but other part, what it really does is it does splay it if you press down into it. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a little short, it's a little harder to do. But I'm going to advance the thread close to the bump. I'm going to tie it down. And the nice thing with nano silk is you really can pull. Okay, and then I'm just going to tie touching turns down. And it actually, when you, when you hit the bump, it actually splays the tail. Now, it's, now I'm struggling to get longer. For, okay, I would say, unfortunately, that tail's too short for a ram. Damn. Anyone got a hackle here? Seriously, just for tailing purposes. The, okay, well, we're going to have to make a... Okay, so there, I, basically I'm tying it in right by the... Pretty much almost by the tips to try and maximize the actual thread there. Or the actual tail there. So that one's a little bushy, but we can always trim it down. Um, now, normally I would actually have the, the actual hackle go all the way down to about two-thirds on the hook shank. So I'm just covering the hook shank with a bit of, bit of thread just to kind of even up the, the thickness, and you'll see now why. Normally there'd be hackle fibers all the way down there. Now, we're going to tie this with a bit of flash too. The body will be flash, which I will then color with a permanent marker. Um, a little flash goes a long way, so I'm going to pretty much just use two strands of this. This is, I can, this is Flashaboo 6905, I can tell you, because it's, it's standard saltwater Flashaboo, but the fine one. I would use, normally when I tie this, I tie it in, the, I use the UV flash, I do the 6904. Lick it to stick it together. And tie it in. Touching turns. And you kind of, for me, you kind of want to go, I don't know, about 60% of the way down the hook shank. Wrap the flash. The, now I've got a bit of a bump on there, so I've kind of jumped a bit to the forward. And I will just wrap the body with touching turns of flash. Till I get to that 60% point. Now I'm going to put a th thread wrap over, two over, and just put it back. I'm going to keep this here because I actually want two strands of flash in the actual fly. Uh, just a bit of flash in the wing never hurts. Okay. Now the only thing that makes us different, as a rule from a standard wrap, is the tail. Not the tail, sorry, the legs. And I've become a serious proponent of organza. I use organza for Lots of things. The mayfly I was tying now before we started was tied with organza tails. Um, and I like organza because it's very mobile, it's soft, it's got subtle barring to it. Um, it doesn't pick up water, it's got a bit of shine. So in every situation where I want something soft but flashy, 
subtle but with movement, organza does a really good job. I don't know if you can kind of see the organza, see the organza fibers. Can you see how it's, it's got nice speckling? Yeah, but it's like a really, really fine version of crystal flash. So I'm going to take about half a dozen fibers of organza. Okay. And before I do that, let me just color the body black. Now, this is why I said someone does ask what color thread to use. I said, well, a red thread can be nice. Um, I'm just going to color that flash black. And the tail, I'm going to add a it's little bit to it. Yeah, no, color all sides in the case of the dry fly. No, I'm sorry, color just two sides, sides and top, but not the bottom. Okay, now I'm going to put the actual legs in. Now, there's lots of ways to do this. I tend to just wrap it around the thread. I don't know if you can see that. And then present the thread to the top of the hook. And then you can tie it in. Okay. Now once it's in, now you want to splay it. And the best way to splay it is to actually just put some wraps through it. Oops. I pulled it. So you actually just put wraps through what you just tied there now. Making a pretty much ungodly mess. <laughs> like that. Okay, so you, you're basically just making everything into a nice, lovely mess as you put thread wraps through. And if you're not quite so happy with the splaying, you can kind of do it again. Normally, you don't want stuff to migrate around the hook. In this case, I'm quite happy if stuff migrates around the hook. Okay? So you've pretty much got an ungodly mess. Now, when it comes to hackling, we'll leave the legs long and we'll sort them out in a little while as we do. When it comes to hackling, you've got a couple of options. Because for me, this pattern kind of, it almost evolves as you tie it. And the reason that I say that... Sometimes the legs aren't looking right, sometimes the legs are lying too far back. If your legs aren't standing proud to the hook shank, then you might want to put a turn of hackle behind those or sorry, behind those legs to keep them actually standing upright, if that makes sense. If your legs are happy, then it's not really a problem. Okay? And your options of hackling is you can tie the hackle in now and hackle forward. You can tie one at the front, one at the back and hackle you know, one one back and then forward again and the other one forward through it. Or you can tie them both at the front and hackle it forward. I mean, sorry, hackle it back and then forward. It doesn't really matter whichever way you prefer. The critical thing with a rab generally is that you want slightly oversized hackle fibers. Um, now, that's also right because the hook capes one size. Yeah, one size larger too. So, you know, generally you want an oversized hackle on a rab. The le the tail's ov is overly long, and then the hackle is oversized too. So, I'm going to tie in two feathers now. I'm going to tie in. And that's what I love about nano silk. You really can bind it down. I mean, and it forms almost no bulk. So I'm tying in a grizzly, which I'm gonna, which I'm gonna wrap last, and I'm tying in a furnace, which I'm gonna wrap first. Okay. Generally, the, f generally, whatever you wrap last is more visible than, you know, featherwise than whatever you wrap first. So if you're gonna add an accent color, which I will do with the, with the grizzly, you know, you wrap. If you wrap it last, it will kind of stand out in the pattern. I should have bought a. Gary, you're not stripping one side, you're leaving them both, you want as much Yeah, we, we're going to, yeah, this is not a, so, there are a couple, you can fish a rab as a dry fly, you can also tie it softer with a hackle facing back to, to actually think, fish as a slight dry fly and be able to swing it. Okay. Um, you can also add hackle point wings in if you really want to make it more of an imitative, you know, specific crane fly type insect. Though as a rule, I think you, you if you see the, the hackle starting at about that 60 point let 60 well, so 60 point from the hook bend. And I'm going to just hackle that forward, the brown, in sort of open turns. Okay, I didn't bring a hackle pliers, but we'll survive. Okay, so what you've got there. And the secret of cutting off hackle stalk is to not cut them, but actually to hold your scissors open slightly and then push a sharp pair of scissors into it. That way you don't snip anything. You leave a slight, slight stalk, which is helpful when you're actually doing this. And I'm going to, from a safety perspective, I'm just going to do one whip finish on this to just kind of hold it in place. Now I've trapped some fibers, but that's not really a problem. I'll just trim those down. And unfortunately, I've trapped an organza leg. It's also not really a problem. Normally, you put in a little more than you think you need. Okay, so there's the f furnace of the brown hackle. Now I'm going to do the grizzly, and the grizzly is going to be fewer turns. 
just slightly through there, starting at the back. Now again, if I decide that my but my legs are sitting too far back, I can pull them forward and I can actually put, turn a grizzly behind them, you know, like that, which make them stand up more. Okay, not necessarily all of them, but it's up to you. And then I can go forward in into those wide open turns that I've made. I'll just do sort of two turns of grizzly, and often I'll finish with one just in front depending. If the, that, that front one is always the most visible. So if I do a turn in front, it's going to be more grizzly than the rest. As it turns out, with the tail, this one is more grizzly than the other. Um, trap it down. Do the same thing. Slide it forward. Push. Turn that off. Pull the hackle back. A couple of whip finish turns for anything that makes sense, get it out the way. Now, I've been telling this whole fly with white, so if I want a black head, I'll just color the last bit of thread. Nanosilk does come in lots of colors, but I just, I've pretty much been using white all the time, and I've got a couple of colors, but I pretty much never use anything else other than this white one. In fact, this is a two, oops, I tried a piece of hackle. This is a 200 meter spool, just to make life easier, you know. It's ridiculously, ridiculously strong. Okay, now that flash, this one got a bit of a crink to it. I'll just trim out that crink or just trim that piece, whatever length I'm looking for. This other one is up here too. The legs, the legs are going everywhere, and that's the whole thing about a rab. The legs must go everywhere. Let's just trim that little bit of flash a little bit shorter. This, I mean, the, the two pieces of flash are minor, but you, I don't see any reason not to leave them in there. Again, if you, can, if you have them in there and you want them, great. If you don't want the, ship, the brightness, you cut it out. If you leave it there, though, you've always got the option to have it. So, the, And then when it comes to the legs, I'll just generally pull them back and then kind of trim them at an irregular angle to start with. Leave them oversized to start with. And yeah, there we go. Yeah. If you've got too many legs, which doesn't necessarily hurt by putting too many, because you've doubled the thread, you can actually pull one and you can pull the whole thing out. If the legs don't come out, if you tie them in the normal way, you know, tie the butts down, they could start coming out. In this case, to get a leg to come out, you have to pull the whole leg out, you have to, you know, which makes life great. And oh, let's put it in my hand and see. See, that's the, the whole thing about the rab. Tom's saying that if you talk, you should see like the, you know. Just drop it down slightly, yeah? you Sorry. Can see it on the camera. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, the downside is I would have wanted the tail to be a little longer than what we're seeing here. Okay, um, purely because if you're not careful, it ends up, see, we're, we're okay here, the, the hackle's not too bad. If you end up with a hackle that's too large and a tail that's too short, often the fly ends up landing like this. Oh, sorry, like that, ends up standing like that, which you don't particularly want. So if it keeps, la if you drop it and it keeps landing that way around, then you've probably got the tail okay. That tail might be a little heavy, but then again, this is a fast water rab, so we, we're not looking at too much trouble. Um, if you think the fly is too light, well, yeah. permanent marker does a wonders. Yeah, if I decide that the hackle, I want to be, want that hackle to be a little darker and, and less brown, I just add a touch of permanent marker into the hackle. Um, fly shops aren't particularly happy about that, but you know, so you just end up coloring the hackle. To darken up the fly. I've, I've found specifically, look, I mean, you can tie this with, with a, a red body, red thread or pheasant tail or whatever you want, but with the red thread then. I found that that one works really nicely for rainbows, but brown trout specifically, and some of the biggest rainbows I've taken on terrestrial type dries, have come on a on a black rab. It's just something about it that it's a bit more natural, I think, than, than something bright. It's all black. Well, no, it's, it's, black uh, it's, it's black and it's mainly a black hackle with like this, the, the, the accent turns would be brown or grizzly, oh, okay. you know. Yeah. So you, you do like five turns of black and then you do like three turns of, of brown or grizzly through that. Yeah. But the body is black and the tail is pretty much what you're seeing here. Yeah. So it's, a, it's far more subtle technically, if you can call a rab subtle, yeah. than, than a conventional rab. The legs leave them longer than you think you need them because, again, you can always shorten them on the water. But rather have them too long and, and trim them down as required than have them too short. Fishing it, 
I don't suggest you fish a rat, especially this size, in anything less than 5x. One, it'll twist your tippet. Two is that, um, yeah, fish often don't play around when they hit a rat. So uh, if you're fishing something a bit too thin, you might find that you no longer have a fly and, and the best fish of the day has decided to depart with, with your rat. Questions? It's the organza legs. That's that's the that's the main thing for me. You know, I have gone so far to organza that it's legs in legs in this. Um, I use clear organza some on on spinner patterns now too, and so, and in some cases the downwing. If you're going to tie like a red one, like a red bodied rab, a normal one, and using let's say more brown hackle, you can use brown legs. This organza's got brown the one side and sort of finer black the other, but the brown legs can actually kind of stand out more on on a reddish bodied one. I'd use brown. And then on the black-bodied one, I'd use black. So it's it's actually really simple, to fi really simple to tie, really effective to fish. And thanks to da oh, Daniel, thanks to Herman's book, I was reading that Spring Creeks from Mike Lawson again, and it makes a lot of sense what he was saying about terrestrial patterns. Because what is a rab? A rab is some terrestrial something or other, you know, crane fly, daddy long legs on the water. Mm. And he's saying that you know, late in summer. Your, your terrestrial patterns outweigh your aquatic insect patterns, you know. So mayflies and caddis are secondary towards terrestrials. There's more terrestrials around. And the terrestrials pretty much tend to get bigger and bigger as summer goes by until a frost kills them or it just gets too cold and they, they then die. So your biggest terrestrials are found at the end of the season when you've got your smallest mayfly patterns and smallest caddis. So that's, th that's the idea behind that, you know. Comments? Well, this flash is a bit too bright okay. by itself. Um, yeah. I did bring, I did bring. This is the 